Good evening, Antioch. Welcome back for our Bible study tonight. Uh, the last one for this spring in the evening. We'll still do our morning Bible studies, um, and uh, we'll do those through the end of June, God willing. But uh, the evening Bible study is the last one uh, till we pick back up this fall. And uh, thankful to have Brother Dale with me. I, I guess I'm thankful. We'll wait and see. He's been hammering on me here a while. <laughs> but uh, anyway. It's um, the last time. It's the la- your last chance for a while, last right? Last chance. So uh, anyway, um, we're glad also to, to have in our live studio audience Jerry Borden tonight and Stuart Scott. And behind the camera back here, we're glad uh, to have Bernie Adams back from the Wild West. And um, appreciate those of you all online. I see we've got Elon and Penny Adams and uh, don't know who else. Uh, we've got, I know different folks tell me that they, they are on here pretty much every week and um, some, sometimes they never have an opportunity to comment, and sometimes they're driving or whatever and can't and so forth. Uh, but anyway, we're glad to have each one that uh, you, joins all. in. Thank you for your all's regular attendance. Yep, absolutely. Um, let me uh, share some announcements today. Um, don't forget we need helpers and volunteers for Bible school uh, coming up here in June. Uh, let Becky know how you can help. Also, nursery folks to work there uh, on Sunday morning. It's coming Sunday morning. I think she still needs folks for both services. And so if you could serve the Lord and your brothers and sisters, um, I know it would be appreciated. Uh, lunches this Saturday, pack and deliver, 8 a.m. Uh, for those that are able to come out and help with that. And also, we have some extra sight and sound tickets. I think the bus is full, but if anybody wants to drive themselves, I think there's some tickets available. Uh, let Becky know about that. And just by way of announcement, uh, don't forget your homework for this week. Did you do your homework yet? Oh, yeah. I did my homework. Good deal. I'll do your, uh, I'll do your pop quiz here in a little bit. All right. Uh, 1 Samuel 18, 19, and 20 this week to get ready for, for Sunday. We're going to be talking about David and Jonathan and uh, Jonathan's daddy and uh, some of those things. And so we'll trust that you'll do your uh, homework, make it make more sense. Um, one of them uh, share joys. Uh, Penny talks about the beautiful uh, flowers, and absolutely, it's a beautiful, beautiful time of year. I've got some irises that are still blooming, some peonies that are out now, and roses, and uh, just beautiful time of the year for lots of flowers. Um, Penny also shares that uh, Jerry Rush is home. Please pray for continued healing for Jerry, and so we uh, want to lift him up. Uh, Penny also shares morning Bible study and Esther, uh, such an awesome study, special blessing to have the ducklings sing for us and the cottage school join us. Um, it has been, and um, that's a really fun study in, in, uh, in the book of Esther, and appreciate everybody that's a part of that. And the little ducklings have been coming up most Wednesdays to, to sing, and tomorrow's their graduation, so they won't be singing anymore after this. And uh, the... Uh, Cottage school students have been joining us for Bible study, and tomorrow's their last day, so they won't be here uh, beyond that either. So, um, but it's been a joy uh, there. Um, also tonight for concern, uh, I'll come back to some other joys in a minute, but Elon asked us to pray for him and his wife, Wanati, and their son, Gibson, and so lift them up to the Lord uh, there in Haiti. Uh, also, uh, the Blyes indicate uh, appreciation for being able to attend virtually, and so we're thankful for the technology that allows that and the church making that available, but particularly uh, Bernie tonight for uh, making that uh, reality for us. Uh, Matt asked us to keep him in prayer, uh, having a tough time at work and some things there lately, so please pray for Matt uh, Helsley, very stressful. Um, the Domans ask us to pray for their son, Buster, had some minor in and out, uh, and that went well. Praise God for that, and so we are thankful, and um, we, we are grateful for that. Let me share some other uh, praises tonight. Um, we're very grateful for the graduates we were able to recognize on Sunday, mm-hmm. and uh, great to celebrate that. Thank you for praying for my sister, Judy. Her cataract surgery went well. Um, thank you for praying for my son, Alan. Uh, his surgery went well on Monday. Uh, the doctor said yesterday that it looked as 
good or better than any that he'd seen. And so that's a good sign. He goes back again on Friday for a follow-up appointment once again. And so he's got to keep his head tilted over to the right and all of that uh, to, for his retina to repair. So pray that continues to heal. We're grateful that uh, Benny Andy's test came back um, negative for cancer and uh, good news there. Um, Calvin Crable is home recovering from his surgery. We're grateful that Tom Brower is able to be with us on Sunday. Uh, Mike Klein's surgery is over and uh, continue to pray for him. He's going to have to have some follow-up uh, cancer treatments. Donna Babcock is home, and so uh, remember them. I think today's their anniversary, actually. Yeah, I, I think I read that on Facebook. Um, so happy anniversary there. Uh, thankfully, George Glading got home as well, and also uh, Ned Conklin, Laura Hodges' dad, uh, Laura, uh, Linda Hodges', Hodges. dad. Yeah. And so we're grateful uh, that he's doing better. Um, Bo Neff, a joy for him, and, and also um, Ruby and George Weeks, it looks like, have a place, hopefully, and so uh, it looks like they're going to be able to move in, pray that all goes smoothly. Um, we're grateful for Cheryl and Walt Jett that came in, worked on this bank over here beside the church and did the weeding and put down mulch, and it looks about 800 times better, and so we appreciate their uh, faithful service in that regard. Um, also, I just want to say uh, thankful for WBTX. Uh, they have 50 years uh, celebrated, and tomorrow evening, that's one of the announcements I forgot to make, but tomorrow evening up at um, Harrisonburg First Assembly of God Church. Um, look out, you all right? I just shifted my chair. <laughs> uh, There's going to be a benefit concert for WBTX. The Hoppers and Promised Land Quartet, and uh, it's a free will donation concert. Doors open at 6, concert begins at 6.30, and so um, encourage you to participate in that. If you're not coming to the Annalacle Duckling Preschool graduation, uh, that is tomorrow evening, and so um, would love to be able to get up. I know the, the Hoppers and Promised Land both always do such a fantastic job. Um, invite you also to uh, remember... Um, Let's look here. Oh, Matt says, praise God for Eden's graduation service at Valley Baptist Preschool. It was so cute. The kids sang, and it was awesome. Uh, I'm, I know that was wonderful. Um, Penny asked us to please pray for her cousin, um, Tina's husband, daughter, and sister. Tina passed away this morning after having had an aneurysm, and oh, I think she said she was you. in her 50s. Um, and so please lift them up to the Lord. That's got to be so very difficult and very tough. Um, we uh, Let me look back over here to see if I've missed anything. I don't think so there. I um, want to invite you to uh, continue to pray for Buck Spence as he continues his radiation and also for Nancy Mumal. Um, pray for Bob Miller as he uh, continues to uh, battle macular degeneration. Uh, remember Mason Fadley fighting some allergies and infections and Brooks Brinkley, Dan and Becky Wolverton's grandson uh, battling anxiety. Remember Mike and Holly Cooley, tomorrow they take off for uh, Sierra Leone and so pray that that all goes smoothly and well. Uh, remember Casey Hawkins who is having some pregnancy complications and remember Lucille Fadley. Uh, she is out of CCU but has some disorientation and so pray for Lucille. Remember Shirley Kerber uh, who has uh, 20 some stitches in her knee. Uh, pray for, for that to heal soon. Uh, also invite you to remember Rhonda Shelton. Rhonda is a patient in the Woodstock Hospital and probably going to have a test tomorrow or Friday. They don't know exactly which yet, running a scope down uh, her throat and so trying to figure out exactly what's going on there. Um, remember um, Roma, uh, Loy was supposed to have a cataract surgery today, but they had to postpone it because of sinus infection. Continue to remember Barbara Kibler in your prayers and also Richard Brown's brother Edward, uh, who had a stroke. I want to invite you to remember Donna Fulmer, who uh, has, again, another heart attack, and she's going to be having a heart valve replacement. Um, remember Kent Jeter as he battles some allergy and sinus issues, and Glenda Sherman as she awaits uh, opportunity to find out what's going on with her cough. Larry Polk as he is awaiting a date for his surgery, and 
Um, also, continue to remember the um, Supreme Court justices and pray for their protection. Uh, our weekly prayer emphasis, please, uh, that we might please God in all that we do at Antioch. That's our goal. That's what we want to. That's what we want to accomplish. And especially tonight, we want to remember the grieving families in Texas. Um, yeah. It's just uh, heartbreaking to see what has taken place there, and uh, cannot even begin to imagine. Uh, what those parents and grandparents and what that community is experiencing right now. So please lift them up to the Lord and also our, our uh, nation. Um, you know, those that 8, 9, 10 years old, if, if they had been killed 8, 9, 10 years ago inside the womb, that would be perfectly okay. And we've got people advocating for that today, but somehow this is different. No, it's all tragedy. It's all murder. And so please pray for both and um, lift these families up to the Lord in your prayers. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, let's see, Penny said a lot of falling lately. Remember her mom um, who's been falling, Miss Lily Ford, uh, praying about options to help prevent falls. And so, uh, and then the Doman say, I thank the Lord for all of his blessings. Um, <laughs> Thank the Lord for an opportunity I had last night to travel down to Collinsville, down below Roanoke, and uh, share with a church there that invited us to come and talk about CBC, and so they're going to be taking their vote, I think, next week or the week after, um, and also Columbia Furnace uh, out the road here, the um, Columbia Furnace Church that has left the Church of the Brethren uh, will be voting next Thursday uh, regarding a decision to join CBC. So pray for God to guide uh, each of those congregations as well as others uh, all over that are making those decisions. Um, Brother Eddie says, can't imagine the pain of all who lost in Texas, uh, praying for all of them. And uh, we certainly are. It's good to have Eddie in our live studio audience tonight that joined us as well as Ruby Weeks. And so uh, we're thankful um, for them being here. So um, any other uh, joys or concerns tonight from anybody in person? Ruby? The one today did not work out. Uh, pray for George and Ruby Weeks. The uh, the place they thought they had uh, didn't come through, and so keep praying uh, that God would provide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Praying for God's will um, in that regard, which is always going to be best for us and uh, in the long run, but uh, sometimes it's not always easy in the short run. Um, any other joys or concerns from anybody in person tonight? Um, anybody looking for a job, uh, Ruby's got a friend that needs a sitter uh, to set with someone in their family a couple days a week, and so let her know. Um, and so I don't know whether we'll be able to get a mic uh, for our folks tonight or not. We'll see. If not, we'll just try to do a good job of repeating uh, what folks say and so forth. So. Um, if there aren't any others tonight, well, let's go ahead and pray. Um, Dale? Are you up to that challenge tonight? I always can pray. All right. I've always you lead us? got something to be thankful for. Amen. Lead us in prayer tonight. If Our you... great and heavenly Father, Lord, I do thank you so much for this wonderful day. Father, I do thank you uh, for the dry day today, Lord, to get some of the uh, uh, mowing and stuff done around, around that needed to be done. And, Father, I thank you for this beautiful day. I, it, as George was talking about earlier, the flowers, to see the, the flowers uh, blooming everywhere and and just, it's just a beautiful day, Father, and we have a lot to be thankful for each and every day, Father. We have, uh, we, we praise your holy name, Lord, for Alan and, and his surgery, Lord, and we pray for his recovery, Lord. We continue to pray and, and thank you, Lord, for Donna to get home from the hospital, Lord, and we, we pray and miss her here at the church, Lord, but we know that she's uh, in good hands with you, and Father, you're taking great care of her, and you're getting her through recovering. Father, I pray for Jerry Rush, and, and thank you for getting him home from the hospital, Lord, and 
what it is it's good to hear that his that his progress is is coming along and father i just uh thank you so much for um the people that uh reach out and help each other in, in this midst of this time that we're living in today lord um people checking in and, and seeing all the uh emails of people that's been reached and contacted for and father we just thank you so much for that people that love you to serve you um with all their heart lord um it's it's a, a great thing to have that, Lord, in the midst of a darkened world that we're living in, Father, and, and we can't help but share some of that pain and hurt with the, the families down in Texas, Lord, that, that have lost these young children. Yes. Uh, Lord, it, it sets heavy on any Christian's heart, Lord. Mm. The mourning, the hurt, that it is just a natural feeling, Lord, that this evil coward, this act uh, has taken so many innocent lives, Lord. Mm. We pray for... Uh, those families, Lord, we lift them up like George said, the grandparents and, and all that's affected by it, Lord, not just in Texas, but, but countrywide that has a heart for yes. people and humanity, Lord. There's so many people hurting for that. And, Father, we, 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 we don't want to forget uh, California or, or mm. Buffalo either, Father. We, we know that this is raging again in this world and it's all over the news. And, Father, we, we, we ever so... Pro- I pray for you to come, Lord, and mm. and, and just mm. clean this world up, and and just uh, give give all the lost people hope, Lord. Uh, we, we as Christians stand with that hope because we know you, Lord, as our personal Lord and Savior. But Father, there's so many in this world that doesn't know who you are, and help us reach them. And Father, we pray for each and every one that's been on the uh, the prayer chain here lately, Lord. The list is is long, but we do remember that the the, the all the great things you're doing, Lord, and most importantly, we remember all the healing that you're doing, Father, all the ones that need healing, Lord. You hear our prayers in the mornings, you hear them in the afternoons, you hear them in the evenings, Lord. Uh, we just thank you so much for everything, and Father, uh, I mean, I just thank thank you for the graduation, the little ducklings, the beautiful sanctuary that's being drawn up for them and, and, and putting on display for their moving up, Lord, these young children. Oh, Father, you're just an amazing God. I just thank you, Lord, and everything. Ask it all in your precious name. Amen. 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 Well, I also want to remember, I uh, forgot when we were going over, but remember Guy and Diane Pence. Uh, they're on their way or maybe uh, are in, in uh, Alaska, and so we want to, they're not probably able to join us tonight, but anyway, remember them in our prayers. Um, Oh, yeah, I'll catch you up. I'll catch you up. Um, the, uh, we're in, back in the book of 2 Thessalonians here tonight. And uh, for the last time, I thought when we started this that we'd only be uh, probably a month or two uh, last fall. But it uh, has certainly evolved into a much larger study and a much longer study. Um, but uh, appreciate everybody has been a part of it over the last several months. And... Um, Remember that this was uh, a church that Paul and Silas had planted on their second missionary journey when they were going around the, the Aegean Sea, and uh, they had to move on. Persecution broke out, and, and they had to move on, but the church they planted remained, and so Paul was writing this letter, the second letter, back to the church, and there was a rumor going around that Jesus had already returned, and so Paul was trying to clear up that issue. In chapter 1, he, he offers thanksgiving and prayers. In number 2, he talks about the man of lawlessness that must come before uh, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He talks about the importance of standing firm and, and other things uh, regarding the return of the Lord Jesus. And then he um, finishes in chapter 3, inviting folks to pray for him and for them. And then talking about this thing of idleness. Uh, if a man won't work, he shouldn't eat. And uh, how Im- not if he can't work, but if he, if he can and he won't, um, then he said uh, he needs to be put on his own. That's up, important for them to be able to take care of their own needs. He talked about busybodies in verses 11 and 12, and we, we talked about that last time. Um, Paul commanded the busybodies to settle down to earn their own bread, and uh, we talked about how being idle is a dangerous thing, uh, that we should earn the bread that we eat uh, if, in fact, we have the opportunity to do that. 
Um, I want to read verses 13 to 15. We started into these last time. We're in chapter 3 of 2 Thessalonians. And so uh, let me reread some of this, and then uh, we'll go press further tonight. Um, 2 Thessalonians 3.13 And as for you, brothers, never tire of doing what is right. If anyone does not obey our instruction in this letter, take special note of him. Do not associate with him in order that he may feel ashamed. Yet do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. And so last time we were talked about uh, never tire of doing what is right. Um, encourage each other to keep on doing what is right. And, and uh, we talked about that last time. Um, then in, uh, in verse 14, he said, if somebody doesn't pay any attention, he said, um, you need to shun them, <laughs> as we said. That was kind of the, the, uh, the implication that is given there. He said, um, take note of them and don't associate with them in order that they may feel ashamed. And so our first question tonight, I want to invite you to respond to, um, why do you think Paul wanted such people to feel ashamed? Um, is, is, isn't shame a bad thing? Uh, why, why would he want them to feel ashamed? Um, Dale, you got any thoughts about that while we're waiting for people to send things in? Well, I don't think he, uh, I mean, I think he's talking about shame as the type of to admit what, um, in other words, these were active people at probably at one time. And I think he, when he means ashamed, ashamed of not, you know, of proclaiming Christ and not doing anything about it. Or, you know, they, he's talking about idle, not working. You know, maybe these people worked before and now they're idle. Well, you know, maybe these people are idle in their spiritual world. You know, maybe, maybe he wants them to feel ashamed that they're not doing what God has called them to do, what they very much well know by reading the Scripture and reading what his letters and listening to Paul talk. They know what they should be doing. They do. And maybe he, you know, and if you separate yourself from them and you're by yourself, you got nothing to do but to sit and start feeling ashamed and not doing it. <laughs> and so that will draw you quicker back than somebody harping in your ear telling you what you need to do if, you, if you're shunned away and not by somebody, I think that would draw you closer and quicker back into doing what Jesus wants you to do and what Paul's instructing you to do through his Holy Spirit's words. That's why I think. Yeah, the, goal is, the goal is repentance, mm -hmm. and then after repentance, obedience. And so to, to repent and turn back. And, um, and so the shame, if we've done wrong, we should be ashamed. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, and people sometimes talk today about, you know, oh, you shouldn't make anybody feel guilty. Well, if I've done wrong, I should feel guilty. Um, that should be a motivator for repentance. Thank the Lord. Jesus forgives. And then we can move on. And, um, but, but guilt and shame... They can be misused. They are misused all the time, and we've, we've got to be careful. And Satan can misuse them. There's false guilt and all of that. Um, but uh, there's also sometimes no guilt when there should be, no shame when there should be. If a brother or sister doesn't stand up for the Word of God to another brother and sister who believe and know what the Word says, and that one brother or sister doesn't feel ashamed or guilt, how is he ever going to be convicted of a sin? That's right. He's not going to feel... Because he doesn't feel guilty, he doesn't feel ashamed, he would just go on thinking that that was okay and that's right. But, you know, we have the authority to go to each other, not in the judgment term that we're judging each other. Yeah. It's not because it, no. we are instructed to let you know that you're doing wrong and, yeah. you know, you, you should be ashamed of this. And that's where you say that's where their heart gets hardened and lifted up and repents and turns and come back to Christ. Let me, uh, let me share some of the comments that have come in. Um, it's, uh, Penny says, because they were going against what God desires, and if we're doing that, we should be ashamed. Um, Addison Hathaway says, to make them stop misbehaving. That's the goal. Repentance so that they might start behaving. Um, hey, Addison, miss you. <laughs> um, Bob says, I agree with Dale. Uh, he's just sucking up, that's all. Mm. Um, the Domans say, uh, oh, that was to, to Eddie, okay. 
Um, Penny Adams says, sometimes we can intentionally ignore what the Holy Spirit is telling us, and we need brothers and sisters to help make it clear. Um, we do. Uh, you had a comment you were going to make here, Stuart. Restitution rather than retribution. Yes. <laughs> What's the difference? To, to bring back versus to push away. Yeah. Uh, retribution is about revenge. It's about punishment and hurt. Uh, restitution is about restoration and uh, putting, putting that relationship back together and the relationship with the Lord, first of all, and then as we are healed in that way with, with other brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. So, Any other thoughts or comments about that tonight? The Life Application Bible says hunger and loneliness can be very effective ways to make an idle person become productive. Paul was not advising coldness or cruelty, but the kind of tough love that a person would show a brother or a sister. Or I would add maybe a son or a daughter. Um, if you got a if you got a child, uh, you know, at home that's not doing what they're supposed to do, um, you know, part of the job, of mom and dad, is to make sure they do it. And so, um, that in the same way, and with brothers and sisters in the church, cultural background study Bible says churches probably borrowed from Jewish communities the model of exercising different levels of discipline. Jewish communities sometimes excluded a person from common meals or from fellowship for a period of time. Sometimes they beat them as a form of discipline. Sometimes they expelled them from the community completely. The form of discipline here is the lightest form of discipline. Um, He's not saying go out and beat this person. He's not telling them to cut them off completely. That's the goal is, as Stuart reminded us, restitution, restoration, um, bringing that person back into the into the family um the uh all kinds of comments here uh let's see eddie says accountability yeah absolutely um we need accountability we all need accountability that's one of the main things that uh it's kind of a linchpin for covenant brethren church that's uh not not always fun but it's a vital vital piece that we be accountable to one another Um, it's not just I'm going to tell you what to do we share with each other it's a it's a two-way street and um, we do that together the Doman said we all need to be ashamed we mess up and don't repent or ask for forgiveness Um, Rhonda oh good to have you Rhonda from the hospital tonight sometimes we need to meet others on an even playing ground, letting them know they're not alone. We're all in sin. That's exactly right. None of us are here without sin. Talked about that today, that if uh, you had to be sinless, this place would be empty. And we talked about that men's lunch today, I think, um, that uh, the place would be empty. Nobody would be here. Uh, but thank the Lord there is forgiveness uh, and restoration. I don't think I could grow, and I feel like many other people couldn't grow in their relationship with, with God if they did not have a caliber. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there was a time when I know I didn't, you know, I, I proclaimed the name of Jesus, but I wouldn't hold myself accountable to nobody, and I surely didn't mature in Christ that, you know, that way, and I think if you miss that, if you miss that accountability to your brothers or sisters, you're not going to grow very strong in your faith. Um, Michael Cooley has talked about in some of the places in Africa, it's culturally acceptable for husbands to beat their wives that's that's part of the the culture and so part of the work of he and holly and other missionaries go into that is to say that may be culturally acceptable it's not biblically acceptable that's not what the bible teaches and um we have similar problems in this country not that beating Beating our spouses is culturally acceptable. That's not. But there are a lot of things in our culture that are culturally acceptable today that we want to try to bring into the church and anoint and say, well, that's, you know, you just got to accept it. No, we we don't just accept it. It's what does God's word say? And um, that's what we need to be accountable to is is to what God God has to say. Um, 
Eddie says, discipline with love is the only way to show Christian value and God's will for all of us. Um, it, it has to be, the motivating factor has to be love. Um, it has to be rest, restoration. That's the goal. That's the, um, it's not to make somebody feel ashamed for, ashamed, for shame's sake. Um, but the long, the long, uh, the long game, so to speak. So let me ask you this. Why do you think Paul drew a distinction between enemies and brothers? He said, don't treat them as enemies, but as brothers. Why would he draw a distinction between enemies and brothers in this passage? Uh, Penny says, I don't know. Oh, uh, she's talking to Rhonda there. Okay. Um, yes, Ruby? Um I was just thinking that, uh, you know, it, the approach and, you know, yes, maybe distance, but um, there's ways you, that you say things or do things without being very harsh. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, maybe it's something that, that we might have dealt with earlier. Uh, instead of saying, well, you need to stop this. You can say, you know, I had that problem, and this is how I dealt with it. Um, and they may not be ready to hear what, how you dealt with it, but, you know, uh, you plant that seed, and it gets in there. And, you know, God can use that, especially if you share how Scripture or how the Lord dealt with your heart about it. Uh, God will honor that, I believe. Yeah, and I, and I think... Um, you know, to take that one step further, to not just say um, that's something I used to struggle with, because a lot of times we're still struggling with it, and and to let them know that it's sometimes when I put it in the past tense, it makes it sound like, well, I got it all figured out now. But um, say something, you know, that that's something I still struggle with from time to time, and let's help each other. Here, here's here's what maybe we can do, and so that's a, it's a partnership. Um, Bob Miller says, enemies are the workers of Satan. Um, mm. The Hathaways say today's culture is exactly opposite of the biblical law in, in almost every single way. Um, and so... Uh, I, I say, I, I, I think I'm what I'm, I'm getting on this regard to love. You know, Jesus tells us to love our enemies, not yeah. to hate them. And he says, don't treat them as an enemy. Um, I think I think there's two di distinctions type of love there that he's looking at. I mean, an enemy, you can say you love your enemy, and, and, and most of us do as a Christian. We love everybody, even our enemies. Who are in, our enemies? The ones that's going to, to pull us away from Christ, you know? The ones, you know, we love them to a certain extent. You know, we, we love them, but we're not going to socialize with yeah. them. But a brother is somebody that knows Christ. And yes. knows who who they are, and uh, knows Jesus. So he says, warn them as a brother. I mean, I certainly would approach somebody that I thought was my enemy in love and talk to them. But if it's a brother in Christ that I know that has openly proclaimed Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you know, I'm going to warn you. You're you're on a road to destruction here. This is not acceptable. But an enemy is, you know. You're cautious to go yeah. to them. And that, that's how I seen it when, when, when I was reading. It's really two different approaches. Mm -hmm. um, you you want to love and approach both of them, an mm -hmm. enemy and a brother, but but there is a different way to do about it. This this person that Paul's talking about is still a believer. Um, and as such, you're, you're trying to woo them back. You're not trying to win them for the mm -hmm. first time. Um, you're, you're trying to pull them back into obedience, and so as Eddie mentioned earlier, the discipline should be out of love and not spite, not anger, um, not pride. Um, I'm better than you, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you back in line or anything like that. Um, but the goal of, of this type of discipline was always reconciliation. It was restoration, as we've said, not condemnation. Um, Warren Wearsby says there's a difference between friendship and fellowship. Fellowship means you have things in common. <laughs> that's the, the brotherhood uh, of believers, and um, that's, uh, that's what, we, what we desire. Um, I think probably what maybe Paul was indicating, 
this meant that they couldn't participate maybe in love feast. Um, they couldn't maybe visit in each other's homes until they, until they addressed these things in their lives um, and, and took care of some of these things that needed attention. Um, let's uh, see if I can catch up here. Um, Penny says, I think he refers to enemies as enemies of Christ. Struggling Christians aren't necessarily enemies of Christ. Um, a- absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we can get to that point, but that's pretty far down the road. And um, but individuals that are struggling in their walk are uh, are not enemies. Eddie says, uh, "Amen, Jonathan. The nation is treating people as enemies, wishing harm to them versus loving them like brothers." Um, Rhonda says, "Sometimes we can just ask, how can I help you, or how can we help each other? Then groups can be formed, like Tuesday nights, like Celebrate Recovery." Um, absolutely. I got it. Rhonda, your comment made me think about uh, Monday when I took Alan down for his surgery. Um, they took him in for the pre-op at about, at about 11 o'clock, and um, that was the last I saw him until about 5. Um, and so I did some reading, made some phone calls and everything else. And um, But I was listening to some things that were going on, and there was a fellow there that was welcoming people that were coming into the area for surgery or for questions. They had a testing area there and all of that. And every time somebody would come up, he would ask the question, how can I help? And man, when I heard that, I thought, that's exactly what the church should be asking. Everybody that comes our way, how can I help? And um, I, I just thought... If, if we lived that in our lives, if our, if our church, um, and many, many of our folks do in so many different ways, um, if we kind of adopted that, it was just a very friendly and an inviting, uh, you know, open door. Um, how can I help? Now, you know, I wanted to go up and say, well, you can get rid of all the um, deductible. You could take all the, de- you could help in that <laughs> There are some things they can do. There's some things they can't do. There's some things we can do in the church. There's some things we can't do. But to do what we can, how, how can I help? I just thought that, I thought, man, that's really a, a motto we need to adopt. Uh, how can I help? Anyway, um, verse number 16. Um, woo, we're getting close here. Verse number 16 Paul says, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with you all. And so this is kind of Paul's complimentary close. I remember in school we learned to write business letters and there's the salutation at the beginning and the complimentary close at the end. And this is his complimentary close. Um, What a gift to invite on them peace at all times and in every way. Um, So what he's really talking about is the shalom, God's Mm -hmm. presence. When you are in God's presence, there is peace at all times and in every way. When we get out of God's presence, not so much. Um, The Amplified Bible says, at all times, in all ways, under all circumstances and conditions, whatever comes. Um, So let me ask you this tonight, what steals God's peace from us. Why do we sometimes not have God's peace? What what takes it away? Anxiety, stress, things in life that we look at, material things that God warns us about can actually rob you of your joy when your primary focus is becomes that type of stuff and it can all be restored. Amen. But you got to have you got to find your inner peace with Jesus in order for it to be restored. He's your peace with him has got to be greater than your anxiety or depression or drugs or whatever it is. Moving into his presence. Yep, too. moving into the presence with him. <clears throat> yes, when we try to take control. Ruby? Uh, you know, I believe it's Paul that says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, um, 
My dad used to say, keep looking up. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, we got to keep looking up to Jesus. Our circumstances can't overwhelm us. Um, I let that happen yesterday, to be honest. I had my meltdown crybaby time with the Lord. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I was his sport brat kid yesterday, if you want. But uh, when we start purposely looking to him and deliberately trusting him, and then I put on some worship music. Amen. And that's how you get your spirit lightened. That's how God works. That's how things get moved. I think I heard a preacher talk about that not, not long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder who. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, some of the answers that have come in here, the Hathaways say uh, worries and stress. Eddie says taking our eyes off of God. And, and that's usually when the worries begin, when the stress comes. Um, we, we begin looking at earthly things instead of heavenly things. Uh, Penny says Satan. He brings in doubts that God has it under control. Rhonda says letting the world get in the way of Jesus. Um, coming between. Reminds me of that old song, Nothing Between My Soul and My Savior. Um, Dale, you want to sing that for us tonight? Nothing. Be- I don't know how the tune goes. <laughs> uh, Bob says, "Not trusting God." <laughs> I got Eddie, my back man, over there. Uh, He'll pull it up for me. Doman says, "Sometimes we run ahead of God and make a bigger mess." And uh, Elon said, "With God, prayers, all things can be changed." Um, some of the things that I thought that sometimes steal God's peace from us is uh, some of the things you've said: worry, as well as fear, um, busyness. We get busy. And when we get busy, our peace begins to evaporate. Not busy bodies. Not busy, yeah. yeah, Busy. Busy. (laughs) That can do it too. That's exactly right. And I I put down certain people. Sometimes sometimes certain people can take our peace. And so as we had talked about earlier today, setting some boundaries um, that that might be important to... um, not that we're. I noticed he slid that chair a little further away from me. Ah, you know, I set that boundary. Got to protect my peace, man. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, let me see. We could walk on water if we didn't take our eyes off Jesus. Penny says. I think I read a story about that somewhere. Um, and uh, absolutely, we we've got to keep our focus there. Um, one of the things that, uh, let's see, what time is it trying to pace ourselves here a little bit? Uh, let me ask you this question. Um, how can we experience more of God's peace at all times and in every way? How can we, how can we do that? Um, send in your answers, those of you in person, um, volunteer what you have to say. How can we experience more of God's peace at more times and in more ways? Um, you cannot do it if you're not in the Word. Stay in the Word. If you're not reading your Bible Stay every day, in the Word. you cannot do it. Yeah. Put God first, Stuart says, in everything that we do. Um, brings greater peace. And I honestly believe it all falls back to that. I don't believe that you can put Jesus first in everything you do if you're not staying in the Word. That's right. I mean, that's, it all boils down to the Word. That's the only way you can build your relationship um, through that. Brother Kent Jeter says, John fourteen twenty seven, peace is the Lord's supernatural gift. I think that's where he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you, uh, my peace he's giving. And uh, Penny says, pray, 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 and read his Word. Uh, Rhonda Shelton in God's Word and in his music. Uh, Bob Miller, never doubting, always trusting, God knows best. Um, I added some things here by, by hanging with other believers to encourage each other, to, to help each other out. Um, by staying close to the Holy Spirit and allowing the Spirit to have His way. Um, by staying close to the Prince of Peace. <laughs> um, Close to the Prince of Peace. The Word says in Isaiah, He will keep in perfect peace he whose mind is stayed on thee, on, on God. We keep our mind focused on God. Um, we're more likely to retain that peace. Um, 
Ruby, you had a comment? <laughs> I almost forgot it. Um, yeah, when, you know, I, I, I think sometimes he allows certain things to happen because um, I did a, a Bible study by Henry Blackaby uh, years ago. And God, it opened my eyes to the truth of the fact that God created us for fellowship. And when we get out of fellowship with him, he's, I'm convinced of it. He's going to allow things to happen to bring us back That's to right. him. That's right. So just a thought. Um, and, and for fellowship with each other, the, uh, the Brethren Revival Fellowship, I meant to share one of those tonight. One of the new newsletters that came out talks about the uniqueness of the Schwarzenau Brethren, the uniqueness of the, the Church of the Brethren, Covenant Brethren, Old German Baptist Brethren, the uniqueness. And one of those things are the ordinances. An ordinance is something that is ordained in the New Testament that we're supposed to do that you need more than one person to do, like washing feet, like the Holy Kiss, like love feast, like communion, like laying on of hands, like baptism. Um, you can't do those things obediently by yourself. You, you don't wash your own feet and fulfill the, we wash them, you know, we're in the shower in the morning, but that's not what the Bible's talking about when it says, wash. when you share the love feast, it's with other believers. And so, um, some of you know, that I've got a problem I heard on the radio again this morning. Uh, today was Tom T. Hall's birthday, and uh, they played a song that Tom T. Hall wrote called, Me and Jesus Got Our Own Thing Going." <laughs> We don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. Well, that is about as anti-biblical as you can get. Um, Yeah, we do have a personal relationship with Jesus, but that is lived out in the body of Christ. We need other believers, and we need each other to help us know what it's all about. Um, And and so um, we, we need one another. Let me say we also have to be open to God's peace. We have to be open to it. God brings a fresh load of peace every morning, <laughs> but our box must be open to receive it. Uh, if we're bitter, our, our box is closed. If we're unforgiving, we're holding a grudge against somebody, our box is closed. We refuse to be joyful if we want to wallow uh, or, or be distracted, or we, we get so distracted with busyness um our our box it's not all god wants to give us all kinds of peace we got to have our box open um to be able to receive it yeah When we get on the high end, Stuart says we get proud and and boastful and that also shuts the box and, uh, and we can't receive God's peace. Um, let me see. I'm getting behind here. Um, Dome and say, worshiping and praying brings us closer to Jesus. Seeking God's will, Lori Wakeman says. Um, Penny says, staying in Christian fellowship. Uh, Nancy says, prayer, scripture, and quiet time with God are things that bring peace into our, into our lives. And we have to make those uh, things open to do that. Let me read verse 17. We're getting close here. Um, I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand, which is the distinguishing mark in all my letters. This is how I write. So Paul closed 1 Corinthians. He closed the book of Colossians exactly the same way. Very, very similar uh, thing. Why, question for you, why do you think Paul includes his own signature? Why do you think Paul includes his own signature here? Dale, what do you think? I think he puts his seal on it. He, I mean, you know, he could have said, anybody could say that somebody wrote this out. You know, Paul didn't actually say all this. I did not actually. But if he's got his signature at the end of it, you know, that's like taking a check. You can write the check out any way you want to. And you can say, well, he signed the check, you know. Anybody can fill it out, but, you know, you signed the check. That's why you never signed a check before, you know. But I'm saying if, it, if it's all autographed with your signature, 
then it's authentic. That makes it authentic. That makes it authentic. Yeah. Um, See, so, oh, Penny says, my box was closed this morning. God opened it through fellowship, a Bible study, and women's luncheon. Um, Rhonda says, if my daddy were here, George, he might argue with you on that song. <laughs> he might. That's all right. I'll argue back. Uh, wouldn't be the first time I argued with Donnie. Um, we had a lot of good times together. But uh, you might remember that earlier in this book of Second Thessalonians, Paul said, there was a letter that supposedly came from us that did not come from us. Somebody else apparently sent one. And so Paul is signing. He said, I want to make sure you know this is, from, this is my signature, okay? As, as Dale said, this is authentic. This is genuine. The Cultural Background Study Bible says sometimes people did forge letters, but most letter writers use scribes and then sign their own names at the end or sometimes added brief comments, and Paul often follows this practice in his letters. Various letters that Paul writes, he'll have, it's obvious somebody else has been writing it, and then he'll make his own comments at the end. In one of the cases, he said, see what large letters I use. Um, and that leads some people to believe that the thorn in his flesh was his eyesight, um, that he had, had bad, bad eyesight. The Archaeology Study Bible says Paul typically used a secretary to write out his letters while he dictated their content. He then signed each letter so that the recipients knew it was truly from him and not a forgery. This is a mark of genuineness so that the church would not be deceived. Um, he wants to make sure. Uh, don't you wonder what his handwriting looked like? I remember, uh, any of y'all remember John Lee used to teach uh, math at Central and Eddie's shaking his hand. He was a track coach in some of those things. But I, I remember, uh, I was writing in, in this class one day and he was going around checking our work while we were writing, while we were working. And he looks down at my paper. He said, George, why can't you be more neat like your dad? I said, have you ever seen my dad's writing? <laughs> He said, oh, he's got to be neat. Look at the work that he does. He said, he said that paper there, he said, it looks like a raccoon drug his behind across it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, crack me up, oh, oh Mr. Lee. Uh, Jonathan Hathaway said to prove it was he that wrote it. Um, and Penny Adams says because he most often had a scribe write his letters, this was the way that he signed it. And so uh, the verse 18 Paul says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Um, my brothers and sisters, those of you that are here in person, those of you that are online, that's my prayer for you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Um, that's, that's what the Christian life is all about. Um, the, the grace of God being made manifest and known in our lives. And so um, there are over 318 references to the return of Jesus Christ in the New Testament, several of them in this book of 2 Thessalonians. Um, and, uh, and so as we think about the return of Jesus, it could be even yet tonight. As Dale, you prayed earlier, even so come, Lord Jesus. I was just thinking, you know, I remember in my young Christian walk, you know, I always like, you know, you ever heard that song he's talking about looking for love in all the wrong places? Well, that's the way it was for peace with me. You, uh -huh. know, you look for peace in all the wrong You know, a lot, a lot of people, you know, Jesus is there with the peace, but, you know, they're only going to be peaceful if I have a hundred extra dollars in my wallet, you know. Yeah. They look for the wrong type of, of peace that Jesus, and sometimes his peace doesn't add up with what we think is what's going to bring us peace that day or, or even that. And until you can balance that out and get it right. I don't think you can live in peace until you surrender to his peace. John, John 14, 27, my peace. It's different, not, not as the world gives. Not that hundred extra dollars. You get the hundred extra dollars in there, and then, you, then you're going to need 200 extra dollars to really be peaceful. You get 200 extra dollars, then you need 400 extra dollars. And, and uh, as long as we're looking on things of the world, we're not going to have peace. You're exactly right. Looking for peace in all the wrong places. And, you know, 
I would say every person on earth is looking for love. They're looking for peace. We have that, that craving within us, and, and, and God wants to fill it. He wants to provide it. But we, are, we go in all these, these foolish places. And he will. He will. He Anyone wants to. Anyone that calls upon his name. <laughs> Whosoever will may come. Whosoever will may come. Um, uh, the Domans say the, uh, the world can't give us peace. Only Jesus can, and he does. Um, any other uh, comments this evening? We've come to the uh, end of our time just about. We've come to the end of Second Thessalonians, uh, believe it or not. And um, it's uh, kind of converged. So anybody else in person, any thoughts or comments this evening? Eddie? That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Abs- and, and I think uh, to kind of follow up on that, to bring it full circle, um, Paul tells them there to do that. But, you know, if we look at the rest of the Scripture, we understand that when someone does turn, when they do repent, you take them back in. That was the case in, in the, the church at Corinth. <laughs> he talked about the one guy there. He says, you need to discipline this person. You need to cut them off and so on and so forth in, in 1 Corinthians. And apparently they did. And the man repented, but then he has to tell them in 2 Corinthians, okay, take him back into your fellowships. He's done what he needed to do. And so... It's not a permanent thing. The goal is restoration, and boy, when that happens, that's the that's the whole purpose. That's and we as Christians got to understand that part of it too, George. You know, when a brother or sister wrongs us, and they admit that they wrong us, we need to forget. I mean, when they ask for forgiveness, we got to forgive. We need to go on and carry on our relationship in Christ, like it's, you know, yeah, like it's never been broken. I mean, that's how Jesus would do it. I mean, I know that. You know, if Jesus broke off every time I sinned again. <laughs> but I'm just saying a lot of a lot of times a lot of Christians they get stubborn about it. Yeah. If somebody wrongs them or something, they carry that grudge with them. They say, Oh, I forgive them, but really down at the core core of them, they haven't forgiven them because they haven't reconciled that uh, relationship. Yeah. Now there are some that, you know, absolutely uh ain't gonna yeah. reconcile with you regardless. Yeah. But that's, you could forgive, yes, but, and that's different than reconciliation. Both people have to be willing to reconcile, yeah. but you could forgive even if they don't yeah. reconcile. Let me uh, catch up here a little bit. Uh, Jonathan, the Hathaways say, like Peter told the beggar, gold and silver I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And he went walking and leaping and praising God, walking and leaping and pray. Okay. Had to get that in there. Um, We're glad you got that out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, George and Dale, for your endless devotion to your congregation, to the blast, and for sharing peace and love. Uh, love you. Thank you all for uh, sharing that. Uh, Laura Hammersley, uh, we need to trust God in our everyday lives and follow him when he signals uh, is, and remember he will always forgive. We should remember his love. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for your devotional dad, George, and brother Dale. God bless you and much love. Um, we are uh, at 729, so we're going to close with a word of prayer tonight. And um, I'm not sure where we're going to be when uh, we come back together for our fall study, I'm, where we're, where we're going to be in the Bible. I don't know what we're going to study yet, but we'll trust God to show the direction and lead the way. And again, thank you all for being a part uh, over these last several months. Uh, thank you all that have been in person. And thanks to uh, Bernie and to Matt and to Ella for their faithfulness uh, over these last several months in live streaming. So let's go ahead and and pray this evening before we finish. God, it's been another 
rich time to be in your word. It's rich to be together, uh, Lord, in person as well as with those online. We thank you, Father, for your servant Paul. We thank you, Lord, for his faithfulness to you and to your church in that age that has helped us to be true in this age. Lord, help us to distinguish between culture and the word. Help us to have our boxes open to receive the peace that you want to dump in. And, uh, Father, to receive it and, and also then to share it, not just to set on it, but to share that peace, that love, that joy with others, that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ might be with us all. Father, bless each one that has been a part of our study at any time throughout this year. Bless those who have uh, conducted our, our live streams for us. And Lord God, I pray that you would help each to have a good evening. We look forward to worshiping together on Sunday and uh, continuing in our service to the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you and we ask these things in his name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in and we love you all. Yep, absolutely. 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 <clears throat>